Hi, welcome to the sixth episode of Coding with Amadeus, which is the first episode where we're working with hardware. I have two distance detectors, which we will ultimately use to capture the hand waving movement, which we will use to navigate between pages of the smart mirror. And those devices are really cool. They emit infrared light and then measure the reflection to tell you how far away an object is. Uh, they have an analog output and Raspberry Pi has digital pins only. So we will need to use an analog to digital converter. This device has eight channels, which means that we'll be able to connect two of those distance detectors, a microphone, and still have room for five analog expansions of the smart mirror. Uh, the first step in working with hardware is finding the data sheets for the components that we have. And this range detector has uh, its name printed right here. Uh, also, this analog to digital converter has, uh, has its name printed on top of it. So we'll uh, search the name online, and the first result is usually a PDF file, which is the data sheet. Here I have the PDF for the range detector, and here I have the PDF for the analog to digital converter. So we would like to know how to connect all of those pieces together. So let's scroll down, and right here we see a diagram of this device and has three pins, one, two, and three. And it tells us that the first pin is VO, and O usually stands for output. So the first one is output, the second one will go to the ground, and the third one will supply power to this device. Uh, the microcontroller has 16 pins, and they are all described here. We have channels 0 to 7, and uh, a bunch of other pins. Uh, Raspberry Pi also has uh, pin mappings here. This one has 40 pins, and we will use just uh, some of them today. Just earlier today I got the software fritzing, which will allow me to show you better what's happening on, on the circuit. Uh, without the software, uh, we would be looking at those wires and that would be really confusing. So the way fritzing works, we have this uh, main sketching area in the middle, and on the right hand side we have uh, a library of parts. So if I want to use uh, this sensor in fritzing, I just find the library, and actually it is right here and has a picture. So I'll drag two of those to the main surface. And the first thing I notice about fritzing is if you hover over that pin, there's a tooltip that shows that this pin is voltage out. So actually you don't even need to go to the data sheet if the part is already in fritzing. I'll be working with breadboard, because breadboard makes wire management easier. Uh, when we build the smart mirror itself, there will be no breadboard in it. Everything will be wired together directly. The way breadboard works, it has here four columns of wires, two on the left side and two on the right side. And every single pin in a given column is connected to other pins. So here I'm clicking on one pin and all pins connected to it are uh, highlighted in yellow. Uh, here we have sets of pins in rows, and all five pins in this half of a row are connected together, and similarly all five pins in this half of a row are also connected together. Okay, everything's wired up. Uh, check this out, in fritzing when you click on a wire, all the pins which are sharing this connection are highlighted. So this shows uh, all the ground pins in Raspberry Pi on the right side. It also highlights the entire negative rail of the breadboard. And the black wires which are connected to that negative rail share that connection into the 14th and uh, 9th row. The most important thing is how is the analog to digital converter actually connected to Raspberry Pi and to the rest of the circuit? We have VDD and VREF, and both of them are connected to the 5V rail provided by Raspberry Pi here. We have analog ground and digital ground, and currently both of them are connected to the ground pin of Raspberry Pi. And 
this will introduce some noise in the circuit. We'll see how the circuit performs right now and uh, later we can improve on it. And those four pins, 13 to 10, are responsible for communication with the Raspberry Pi. We will connect the chip select to the chip select on Raspberry Pi and it looks like Raspberry Pi here can support two SPI devices with chip select 0 and chip select 1. We'll just use chip select 0 right here on pin 24. Uh, the clock on the microcontroller is connected to the clock on Raspberry Pi and uh, data output is connected to MISO output in Raspberry Pi and similarly data in is connected to the input in Raspberry Pi which might be a little bit confusing earlier I thought that we need to connect the input of Raspberry Pi to the output of the analog to digital converter but that wasn't the case now let's build a circuit uh, having this microcontroller you might be wondering which way do I put it in there are two features which will allow you to identify the pins on a microcontroller like this the first one is a notch visible here on the top edge of the microcontroller it's also displayed here in the data sheet and the second feature is that the first pin is decorated with a little circular hole right here so the circuit is all wired up let's take a look at it the analog to digital converter is right here those two wires are connected to the outputs of the distance sensors and this whole side of the microcontroller is connected to Raspberry Pi and we'll connect Raspberry Pi uh, for debugging we just need to supply power through USB and internet through ethernet cable I saved the schematic in Fritzing into the github repo so next time you pull you can take a look at this file on your computer we're ready to write some code and debug it However, I don't want to make the videos over 20 minutes long, so let's end this episode here and keep the hardware in this episode and work on the software in the next episode. So, I'll see you in the next video.